Yik eir sitini yuhan, Nila toga kashak sani ki kaya uhan, Hatu yik e wuch in chasiti ya yagita. Good to see you, everybody. Nila Tova and Shaksani Kik here. We feel great that you're with us today as well. Today is week two, day two of our class, January 19th. And we have some fun things lined up for you today. So on the board, we'll have a discussion we have a class announcement for tomorrow, and uh, we also found some resources on place names since Kachkun shared with us the name for Douglas, and uh, folks, we are encouraging you to practice your self-introductions. I wanted to take you through some resources on place names in Tlinget today. <clears throat> After that, We'll encourage you to practice your self-introduction in front of us as a group. And uh, <laughs> um, someone's marking on the screen. That's funny. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, yeah, I'll do that tomorrow. Oh, okay. The self-introductions, if you want to practice as a large group, we liked the momentum we started on Tuesday with folks giving it a try. And... Uh, We'll kind of continue that in case you have questions or you need help, we can help you work through those issues. <clears throat> then we'll do our breakout rooms so folks can practice the knock-knock uh, dialogue. We have two new lines, which we added on Tuesday. So this will be a good chance for you to give it a whirl as well as uh, your self-introductions or anything else that you, counting that you wanna practice. Okay. And so for our discussion today, we have um just really quick, Kachkun, do you know how to remove these marks that are somebody put on our slide? I don't know how to do it. Um, I'm not sure. Let oh oh, I found an eraser. Let's see if it works. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, I don't know. I'll I'll see if I what I can do. <laughs> okay, let me. I'll try to stop sharing and see if it's still there when we come back. Okay. I thought it was on my screen. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think it's mine. Okay, it looks like that worked. So um, <clears throat> anyway, for our, our Friday discussion tomorrow, we'll go over the Alaska Native Brotherhood and share some information about the 12 young men and the woman who founded the Alaska Native Brotherhood and specifically why, um, what they were aiming for. And so that'll be our topic for tomorrow. And then um, I wanted to share some resources on place names today. And so let me just kind of show you some of the things that we found. So the first one is, uh, let me share the link here so folks have it in the chat. And there it is for you in the chat. And the first one is uh, Um, This is Hone, the website that Hone maintains. And it has under resources, if you scroll down through your options of resources, at the very bottom, there's a link for place names. And so if folks click that, I'll take you through some of these uh, resources that are listed here. There's a list of all the people who contributed to this information. And the first resource I'll show you is the University of Alaska Southeast Place Names Map. 
And this was based off the book by Tom Thornton called Um, It means the the names our grandparents had for the land. So there's two options and they're both interactive maps, which I enjoy because you can go to the area you're interested in. Uh, this first one seems to be pretty centered around the Akkwan area and Akkwan area. Um, but what I like about them is that if you go to a town site or a place you can hover over it and it'll give you the thinget name um, as well as a short gloss so for example Deshu we know is a name for Haines um, but there's also a place on Douglas Island called Deshu and what it translates to is end of the trail and so you can kind of see how Deshu doesn't always have to specifically mean the town of Haines that it can apply in meaning to multiple places. Um, there's another one on Douglas called Anachye and Aganya, and it means place the sun shines along. So, the other map I wanted to share is hosted by University of Alaska Southeast. <clears throat> and what I like about it is it sort of delineates the um, areas by Quan. And so if you zoom in, you can follow the map up from Gashiach Quan around the Yakutat area. I mean, up around the, near the Cordova area. Um, you can zoom in to uh, the Yakutat area. Below that, there's Gunahu Kwan. If you keep following it down, you can see the Glacier Bay National Park and Preserve Area. So Gustavus, Huna, Pelican, uh, Huna Kawu land. <clears throat> And there are quite a bit of specific site names published on this map so far for the Akwan area. And the one I wanted to take you to today is here on Douglas. If you click a <clears throat> one of these diamond shapes icons, it'll pull up the Thinget name on the left column. So we can see Anachya and Daganya and Deshu. And let me find. And this is the one Kachkun shared with us as well. And it's Sayyik. So yesterday, I think, I mean, on Tuesday, I think I typed it with an underline K. And so that was a typo on my end, but it's um, spelled here correctly for you, Sayyik. Were there any questions on the uh, this map? Any places you wanted to see in particular? And yes, to answer the question in the chat, I will make sure I post this link on Tovudi so you can quickly access it. And then I'll also put it in the chat right now. A couple more resources I wanted to take you through, which I think are really cool. <clears throat> so those first two maps were the University of Alaska Southeast place name map and Cardo map. Um, next, 
item listed is Khut Jilkat storyboard. And this one is interesting because, um, again, you have sort of a Google map overlay. And then if you look on the right hand side of the screen, you can see place names and click on them and it'll take you to them. I don't know what there's uh, just caught in there, just grouped. I want to know the difference. Oh yeah. Okay, the difference between khut and just khat. It's a good question. Let's see what they say. Hmm. Okay, so in this map, I'll have to look around a little bit more, but so far it looks like what you can do <clears throat> is click the place name. So there's an entry for Khut and in parentheses, it says place of abundance of food. And then you can find it on the map and it'll show up as this red pin icon and you can hover over it and it'll give you the place name. And then of course you can zoom out and it looks like it's located right there at the um, mouth um, coming out from Chilkoot Lake. So that's an interesting resource. And then there's also one for Taku River, Clinket Place Names. Yeah, in, his, in the history books, there's a Chilkoot Charlie. He was the one that found it, uh, gold. Clinket. He found the gold in the Klondike. And they wouldn't let him uh, post it for himself. So a white man came along and said, I'll do it for you. I don't know if he got completely left out or not. Mm. But Chilkoot Charlie, that's who. Chilkoot. Oh, yeah. Chilkoot. Yeah, that's such interesting history. And then this last resource, the Taka River Clinket Place Names website has some inf interesting information, um, acknowledging place names, having a relationship with the land as a visitor. <clears throat> and just some cool information for folks wanting to Visit Taka River area. Information about clans. <clears throat> and then the last resource I wanted to share, which we've visited before, but for folks just wanting to get to know more about the um, different Tlingit place names. You can also go to the beginning Tlingit workbook and I'll include the link in the chat. <clears throat> there it is. It begins on page uh, six, nine. 
and it's listed in the table of contents right before the introduction template. So if you're wanting to say you're from a certain area or you live or reside in a certain area, you can refer to this page for the Thlinget name, its English translation, um, a literal translation, and as well as variations for that name. Excuse me. So yeah, were there any questions on those resources uh, before we move on to the self-introduction practice? Or comments? Edna? Yes, uh, I, I just had a comment. Um, I don't know if I heard it in a lecture or if I read it somewhere, but uh, I was looking at place names and started to realize that those uh, that were named um, by Slinket people um, were named because of something in the area, a resource, you know, Sockeye Creek or, or whatever. But um, when places were named or renamed by the colonists, by the Western folks, they're almost always named after somebody. Um, so it seemed like the person was more important than what the area was important for. So just a, just a thought. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, because uh, I think uh, the, the way we name things, you know, tells you a lot about what's there already and why, why we gave it that name. So uh, I, I think it's really a good thing for to, if you're interested to, you know, look at these names. Uh, they were talking about uh, the trail that goes to Klondike from Haynes on the news. Um, they're, they're talking about it like uh, if it wasn't for the Klondike, it wouldn't be there. It actually was a, already a trail. It belonged to one of the Clinkets in Haynes. When he tried to charge them the fare to, to reuse the trail, they just pushed him aside. Yeah, that is so interesting. Thank you for sharing both of you about that point that Thlinget place names usually provide information about the area and are related to the area itself, whereas colonial English place names are usually biographical, meaning they're like named after a person that often has nothing to do with the area. And um, I've heard that in a lecture as well. And I think I read it too in the book by Tom Thornton. Uh, and just also that point about that Shaksani Kik made about respect and, um, you know, whose narrative are you telling? In colonial history, the Thlinget and indigenous people aren't always respected the way they should be. Yeah, the, the uh, natives, actually the Clinkets, I know for sure, uh, used uh, those names as markers uh, for the land that they owned. And uh, I, I think I read in a book that the uh, natives didn't even know anything about uh, owning land, which isn't true. Uh, there's land I know in Huna where you pick berries and you can't pick berries there unless you have permission from the owner. We always got it. So, mm -hmm. I always honored that. Okay. Good discussion. Did anyone else have questions or comments around place names? 
Uh, and Sahlegal. Uh, so what if there's like multiple names for one place? Um, I'm in the Mendenhall Valley and looking at these different maps, I've already come up with like three different phrases for So I think on on this one here, it was saying uh, Tashayi, but then there was another one that was like inland from Ak. Okay, let me see. There was a third one, but now I can't find the third one. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so here's one that you mentioned in Mendenhall Valley. Um, Ashuyi. Yeah, and uh, in the chat, I posted a map. Um, uh, and that has it listed as, like you said, uh, inland from Ak. Uh, oh, cool. Ak Tak. Okay, let me find these images. I saw you and Kade Kaidekok also both posted maps in the chat, so I'm just opening them up to take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and change my sh screen share one moment so that folks can see. Okay. And are you able to see my whole desktop now? Uh -huh. Okay. I think it was uh, Kenny Austin from Huna that pointed out that uh, about place names uh, having multiple names depending on which clan. Uh, named it, and uh, that isn't unusual, apparently, but I, I can't, I think he gave a lecture on it uh, at one of the meetings, uh, but I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't get to hear her because I think I was working at the same time, so um, that was, a, um, mm -hmm. I think, something he he studied and uh, compiled. Can you say again the name of the person who gave that lecture? Uh, Kenny Austin. Oh, Kenny Austin. And was that part of the SHI lecture series? Uh, Might have been. OK. I don't think it was that, that late, because he died. Uh, I can't remember when, but um, it used to be when they had gatherings, uh, resource gatherings. Mm -hmm. Give a lecture at that time. Oh, cool. So I don't know what they did with the uh, lectures and discussions from that time before, before Zoom. Yeah. This is a cool map, Sahlegao. Um, can I ask where you found it? I believe Kune posted it in one of the MOOCs or classes. And oh. yeah, so I have it in with my resources. Awesome. I'll take a look at that class too. I think we had the same uh, discussion too about the moon. Different areas had different names for, for the moon. Oh, cool. 
there's no common name throughout the, the uh, Southeast Pole that everybody agreed on. Uh -huh. And um, Kiyis Tla, did you have a question or comment? Yeah, um, I was just wondering if we could get one of the names for the moon, um, if that's possible. I'm just curious. Shaksani Kik, one of the names for the moon, did you say? One of the names. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I I went to the Huna Totem uh, collection, and I was so happy when uh, there was a, a recording of of a man, I think from Huna, telling uh, about the names of the moons. And then later on, I discovered that different areas had different names, and uh, the reason I wanted to hear the collection was uh, the person who made the recording um, said that he didn't want anybody to have that information, but they made it available to anybody. And um, uh, and I, what what I was hoping for was he would tell the moon from the start of the year for Clinkett's uh, uh, New Year is a, is a white man's uh, a moon. <laughs> and I, I kind of suspected that we started the new year, maybe March, maybe April. That's so interesting. Uh... I did an internship under Jeff Lear this summer, and he's doing a lot of work around the names of the moons as well, or the months. And he's also very interested in at what time of year does the year start in Thinget culture? Yeah, I, I should have asked my brother, but he, uh, I started working on that, and he was already gone, so. It was always a good resource for me, but I, I couldn't I couldn't find anybody else that could tell me. I think there's some information about it. I mean, um, a little bit of information about it in the phrase book, Klingit Khenachsa. And if you go to page 19, there's a short description about the months and before it goes into their names. So um, to answer your question, Kiyistla, if you're curious about some of the Thinget names of the different months, <clears throat> you can find one resource. This isn't comprehensive. I know that in different areas and according to different people, they might be called different things. But for example, you could see one example for July being hot disi and then it has the english translation salmon month <clears throat> when the fish return um so according to this resource january is awak disi canada goose month the month when geese fly and call but uh <clears throat> there is a sentence in here that says about halfway through this introductory paragraph and it says the year began in july with the return of the fish and the year ended in june with the 13th month added after june <laughs> excuse me um it looks like there's more information by Emmons and De Laguna in the book called The Thinget Indians. And then also the Thinget Moon and Tide Teaching Resource um, published under the University of Alaska Sea Grant. Yeah, 
But yeah, really interesting to think about the beginning of the year, starting with the return of the fish rather than just the middle of winter. I kind, and, of, kind of thought that maybe it started at the time when we could start gathering food, which would be April. Uh, because that's that's when we used to go after after the uh, what they call uh, suck mm -hmm. and uh, get that. I always counted that in my mind as the first of the year. Chicken and then uh, the salmon eggs or I mean the herring eggs are not too long after that. So. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that would make a lot of sense because that's when, like you said, that's uh, to start budding and you can harvest them. And then the herring eggs feels like a, it feels like a new arrival of the new harvesting season. I think uh, July is a little bit late for the beginning of the year. Mm. Um, might be the season to put up fish, but, uh, but we started gathering other things before that. Um, I mean, we had a lot of time to prepare for the salmon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I would love to learn more about the, the months and the new year. I'd and like uh -huh. I didn't hear what uh, Jeff Lear has to say about that because I think he's on the right trail. Yeah. I wonder if I can <clears throat> check his availability to talk to our class. That would be great. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And Again, uh, I'm not sure where I got my, my notes from here, but um, I do have a list of all the months that I found somewhere in the resources. And um, it actually started with saying the month before giving birth, but then their first month is July. And then they go through June, and then there's a 13th month. Mm hmm Yeah, I know Jeff Lear has some notes that like he interviewed several different people from different areas and they all started the year in different months. Yeah. Yeah. It would, I'll see if we can uh, check his availability. And uh, Shawat Kedan, you have your hand up? You're muted. Sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, wait. No, you're not muted, but I can't hear you. Do you have a Bluetooth headphones attached to your computer or anything like that? Hmm. Okay, I hear you, baby. Okay, hello. Hey. Um. So I have the uh the she learning Tlingit app um that the uh Sea Alaska organization made. And on theirs, um I don't know if you can see. Oh we lost your audio again. You cut out. Half moon and yeast dis is new moon. I don't know where that comes from, but that's what they have on the moon in their app. Can you please repeat that again? You kind of cut out halfway through. Darn it. Um, this yadi is finger moon. This plane is full moon. This kigi 
is half moon and east this is new moon on their app oh cool and what's their app called again it's s i or s h i learning sling it okay <clears throat> I'll have to see if I can grab a link. I have that app as well, but um, just so folks could take a look at it. Okay, awesome discussion. Are there any more comments or questions around the months or place names? Yeah, send a note to uh, Anna. If you have questions about places. It's a fun discussion. Yeah. I'll put my email in the chat. And uh, like she said, if you have more questions or comments about this, go ahead and email them to me and we'll continue it. OK. So before we head into breakout rooms, we wanted to encourage you to practice your self-introduction if there's anyone here that feels comfortable or would like help from us um <clears throat> you, know, I have, uh -huh. you learn a lot from others and their struggles uh so that uh, that's why we wanted we want to do this if you're brave enough to share i think it's really great gonna teach mm -hmm. And then just a reminder, I do have the template up on the screen and the lines in blue are totally optional. So your grandparents information or clan house, that's not required. I don't include it in mine. Um, it's just if you know your grandparents clan and clan house. Okay, Sani. Yeah, I'd like to go ahead and take you up on that offer and go. Okay. I know if I wait until the end, I get really nervous. <laughs> me too. I'm saying. It's like, put me out there fast. Yeah. Good as she's. Thank you for giving me this time. I really would like to, for you to listen to my sounds so that I can learn to pronounce them um, to where people can understand. So, Glaitka, Glena, Liana, you hot do a sock. Think it, Glena, Sani, you hot do a sock. Clean AD, Nahatsati, Wushkitan, Yari, Ayahat. Saik, I have to work on putting that X at the end. Saik, Yi hot yati. No, I'm, I, I, I skipped it. Aquan <laughs> Ayahat. I skipped the line, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then the, the new ones is Wushkitan Dutch Hun, Kaguantan Ayahat. That last word I need help with, the Dak No Wuch. And then the Yate Hit Ayaha Na Hata Hiti. So obviously I need help. So that's why I'm going first. So if you could help me with that. Gunas cheese. Okay, perfect. And uh-huh. Okay. Wait, can't you have a comment? Uh just the questions she asked about for uh for okay. my outer shell. Uh-huh. Ah. So you could say they're your grandparents' clan and then say, Aya Achtaka Nuku. Aya Achtaka Nuku. Okay. Goodness, Chish. And then the last one, too, with the, the house, the clan house, Aya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aya Hanaka Hidi. Aya Naka Hidi. Mm -hmm. Ah, ha. first time saying that. Okay. Yeah, so our clan house would be 
Ha nakahiti. Ha nakahiti. Mm -hmm. Nakahiti. Nakahiti. Yeah. Oh, good. Goodness, Chief. Thank you. Uh. Okay. Show it, Kidan. Oh, I think I just never put my hand down. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, Edna? Uh, and a tree. Uh, uh, like, ta, genach, Edna, lambo, you hot do a sock. Sling it, genach, cause yet, you hot do a sock. Dafting tan, nachat city. Uh, this is a new one. Uh, ayaha. Yi pa yi ya yadi ayahat. Um, oh, same thing. Dakting tan ayahat. No, that one should be my my heritage one. Hunakawu ayahat. Anchorage yehat yati. Uh, Kaguantan Dakshan Dakshan Chukanadi Aya Ach Danach Da Danka. How do you say that? Da Dakanuk Aya Ach Dakanuku Aya Ach Dakanuku. True Canadian, I ach da kunuch. Um, tash hit ka ka shaya hit. Aya ha kana ha knat. Aya ha na ka hiti. Gnachish ho ho. So basically, I said, my English name is Edna Lamebull. My Slinget name is Kothyet. My mother's nationality is Dr. Tan. My father's nationality is Filipino. I'm from Puna. And I currently live in Anchorage. My grandparents' clan is Kaguantan. My mother's mother's father's clan is True Canadi. And I come from the clan houses of Snail House and Head House. And thank you. Great. Kashaya hit. Kashaya hit. Man's Head House. Kashaya hit. There you go. Yeah. Kashai hit. Kashai hit. Kashai hit. Yuck, yeah, it was lovely. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh -huh. Good pronunciation. And uh, the struggle with with the name, uh, I know that there, the came up with more names for you on the Filipino. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, entirely up to you, you know, in your introduction, uh, the one you want to present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Been working on it for a few years. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you for translating. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, our friend Lyle James, Hitli Ish, 
watched our class recording and he also wanted to offer a word for Filipino and I'll type it in the chat, but it's yuk kwan. And so um, I think the one you have is great, Edna, and I'm just adding this for more information for folks because the more information, the better you can see. So let me add it here in the slide. Oops. One. And he described it as um, the people from the far out islands. And Edna, would you mind spelling for me the one we talked about previously as well? Sure. Uh, A Y A H E E Y A A. Like A. Ayahika. 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 Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's the one I would like to. That was, sounds sounds really musical. Yeah, I do. I like it. I wonder if there's a translation, like like the one that uh, you just typed. The first one you just typed, uh, people from the far out islands, but. Yeah. How could we translate that? I, uh, he, yeah. yeah. That's a good, that's a good question. Let me see if it's in the dictionary. <clears throat> translates into Filipino. Oh, you're right. It might be a Filipino word, right? Or a Tagalog word. Hmm. Let me see. Yeah. Um, I'll keep working on this. And I saw we have one more um, volunteer. Kiyi Stla, did you want to give it a try? Ah. Uh. Okay, one second. Um, I also have a um, Chinese name, um, but I don't know what the name for um, Chinese is in Blinkit. Um, so I'll just say Chinese for now. Is that the okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Slate, slate, <clears throat> slate car. Chinese <laughs> Ikwan yadi ayahat, akwan ayahat, humiyar yehat yeti, dukdain tan dach tan, sakamoto aya ah, dokanu dokanu ku, tus hit ayaha nakahidi, gunasti shoho. And um, my English name is Mariah Hayes. Um, my Klinkit name is Ki Shikla. My Chinese name is Han Jia Xiu. Um, and <clears throat> I am Wushkitan. Um, uh, my mother is also Wushkitan, and my father is um, European and um, or European American. 
um, and I am of the Akwan, and I live on Kumeyaay land, um, and then my mother's um, father is uh, Dukdenton, um, and my mother's grandfather is um, Japanese, Sakamoto, and then I'm of the Tusit clan house. Thank you. That was awesome. I liked how you included all your different heritage um, roots with your grandparents and you included Sakamoto for your Japanese heritage. It's awesome. Uh, she, she, she was uh, Chinese, uh, December, Chan Wan. Uh, I didn't hear Chan Wan. Yeah, Chan Wan is another way you could say Chinese. I think it's a Thinget pronunciation. Um, yeah. One of two. Uh, Okay. Sounded good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fun. <clears throat> we um <clears throat> we're getting a little short on time to do breakout rooms. So is there anybody else that wanted to practice their self-introduction? And then I'll make sure to include breakout room time for one of our following sessions. Uh, Seki? Gonna sheesh. Uh, Dleit ka kenach, Trisha. You hot do a sock. Linkit kenach, Seki. You hot do a sock. Dakloedi hot city. Swedish ka meti yadi aya hot. Ach ish deshitanach usati. Tegish kwan ayahat. White horse ye hat yati. Gunas cheese ho ho. In uh, English, my name is Trisha. In Clinket, my name is Saki. My mother is Dakloedi. My father's people was Swedish and Métis, and he was adopted by the Deshi Tan. I am uh, from Tagish Kwan, Karkas Tagish, and I currently live in Whitehorse. Thank you. Mm. Do, do you know the meaning of Tagish? Uh, I should know it, but no, um, Tagish, I think is referring to, I thought it just referred to the Carcross Tagish people. Let me see if it's in the dictionary for, for Thinget. <clears throat> Not necessary, but in, interesting. Yeah, it does look like there's an entry in the Thinget Dictionary for Tagish Kwan, people of Carcross and Tagish. But it doesn't give the meaning, huh? No, it doesn't give the meaning. It just says name comes from the Tagish language. So mm -hmm. we'd have to look in the Tagish Dictionary. Oh. Mm -hmm. Cool though. Goodness, cheesh, lovely job. It's uh, really fun to hear um, that they have these clan names that are southeast. Deshi Tong and uh, what's that? What was her clan? I forget. Duck Lady? 
Waiting, Doctor Waiting. Yeah, and good names. Okay, Askutiak Shah. I saw you had your hand up. I think Shawat had her hand up first. Okay, Shawat the Kidan. If there's time. Mm hmm. I'm going to try and do this quick while he's being quiet. Oh, yeah. Tleit ka henach devin yuhat duasaku tlingit henach chowat kadan yuhat duasaku kagwantan nahat city German yadi ayahat um Kitun Kwan Ayahat Olympia Yahat Yati Gunachihoho. Um in English, my name is Devin. My clinket name is Shawat Kadan. Uh, my mother is uh, eagle killer whale. My father is German, I think. Um, I am from Ketchikan and I currently live in Olympia. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> awesome job, Gunnar Cheesh. And Askatiaksha. I uh I think that uh the only area that I think that's a problem for you is uh, almost over. The yeah. W <laughs> W after sock is not a, a letter you say. It what it does is shows you how to what to do with your <laughs> It's not Saku, but mm. Sak. So if you can see me in my lips, Sak. So, um, so you need to drop that Ku at the end. I remember we talked about that last time and I, I was rushing, so I forgot. <laughs> well, it's easy to, to do and get into the habit of it, but it's a song. Your voice is very clear. Very good. Goodness, Chish. Okay. Goodness, Chish, Johan. <clears throat> and we do have one more time for one more if you'd like, Askatiak Shah. Uh, sure. And I had a quick question. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where I got this from. It might have been from James. So where we say we're originally from, mm -hmm. um, I have Illinois and then I have Dach, D, high tone A, underline X, Ayachat. Mm -hmm. so I, I don't know if that's correct, but I noticed it's yeah. different. I'm like, how did I get that? Yeah, Dach means from. So one way okay. you can say I'm from there is add Dach to the place name. Okay. Um, and then the one we taught is and Kwan means the people of yeah and I think it's like I'm not originally of the people I just live there because I'm a settler so um, mm -hmm. okay thank you um Jema Nahat Siti Ainish Jari Ayahat Illinois Dach Ayahat Kwalan Ye Hat Yeti Zeush Krippen Du Shawadi Ayahat Deshitan Hakani Yan Awe Gonachish Ho Ho. And then what I said was my English name is Veronica, uh, my clinket. Name is Asgu Tiyiksha. My it's a class pet name only. Uh, my mother is German. My father's Irish. 
I'm originally from Illinois, and I looked it up. It's um, known as Illinois by the Inili people who originally lived there. I currently live in Whitehorse, known as Kwanlin by the Southern Shoshone people who originally and still live here. I am James Crippen's wife. My in-laws are Deshitan. Oh, oh, wow. We're just talking about James. Yeah. James was my student at one time. His very first Clinket student, like uh, your Clinket te teacher, like 15 years ago. You were the first and the best. Yeah, and I uh, would say, James Crippen will be there, and I and hurry and get online. And oh, he just left, so I never get to really talk to him because he's very quick. And, <laughs> so we'll capture him one time to talk to us. <clears throat> Yeah, we'd love to continue that discussion as you offered Askutayak Shah for um, talking about different dialects, if you have graphics for us. And then we're putting together a request to have guest speakers. So we'd love to check in about Zeush availability as well. But we'll follow up with you about that. And um, I noticed there were some comments in the chat that I wasn't able to follow up in in class today. So I'll take note and hope to continue these discussions, but thank you for what you shared. And um, <clears throat> we're at time and we weren't able to do breakout rooms today because you folks were so brave with your self introductions and so contributing with our discussion. And so it's all good stuff. We'll make sure we make time for you to practice the new lines in the knock knock dialogue in our future classes. And Sunny Keek, do you have anything else to add? That was really interesting to learn uh, where all everybody is uh, and what they're trying to put together. It, it sounds really good. You're doing a good job. Uh, with some more practice, you're unsteady right now, but that comes with just practicing. We feel proud of you folks, very good. And we'll see you again here tomorrow if you're able to make it 12 p.m. same Zoom link.